pH in A-level chemistry isn't all just about calculations. You also need to be aware of the different ways we can either qualitatively or quantitatively measure the pH of a solution. In this video, I'll cover three common ways that we can do this in a lab, and I'll use examples from your chemistry A-level. First off, we have indicator paper. This is probably the most familiar, but arguably the least accurate, with regards to its specific purpose of identifying the pH of a solution. There are lots of types, and a common one shown here is blue litmus paper. The blue litmus paper essentially gives you a general idea, an indication you could say, of the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. Like most indicator papers, you usually quite simply dip the paper in a solution and compare the colour the paper turns to a chart which then assigns the pH. In A-level, we rarely use it, but it is, for example, mentioned in the qualitative analysis section of Module 3 on the OCRA specification when testing for the ammonium ion. The chemical formula for the ammonium ion is NH4+, so that's NH4 with a single positive charge. And in this test, which is conducted in a test tube, we gently heat some solution which we suspect to contain the ammonium ions with some sodium hydroxide. We then test the gas produced, if any, with moist blue litmus paper. Now, be careful here, because unlike other ways which we test the pH of something, we're not actually going to place the moist litmus paper in the solution. We're going to hold it over the open end of the test tube whilst the sample is being heated. If the blue litmus paper remains blue, then that suggests an alkaline gas is being released. In this case, our gas is ammonia, and this confirms the presence of ammonium ions in the solution. Moving on and down here to phenolphthalein, which as I'm sure you know is an indicator we use in titrations. Phenolphthalein is colourless in acidic solution and pink in alkali. Specifically, we describe it as having a pH range, and this is of 8.3 to 10. This is then useful when the pH of a solution changes rapidly, like in a titration, as a way of identifying the endpoint of our procedure. We wouldn't usually use an indicator like phenolphthalein outside of this kind of context, as it doesn't really provide any sort of quantity to its suggestion of how acidic or how alkaline a solution is. Other indicators, such as methyl orange and bromothymol blue, for example, have got different pH ranges, and would therefore be more or less suitable depending on your titration. As a part of your A-level in chemistry, it's important for you to be aware how we find out if an indicator is suitable for a titration. And that leads us on nicely to the next piece of kit, the pH meter. Certainly the most delicate and expensive of the three ways of gauging the pH of a solution, pH meters are costly but brilliant at giving an accurate pH reading often to either one or two decimal places. The calibration involves using buffer solutions of pHs 4, 7 and 10, and this has to be done really carefully to ensure reliability in future readings. We can use them as an upgraded version of the indicator paper, but also for enhanced purposes such as plotting a titration curve. Instead of using an indicator like phenolphthalein, you can use the pH meter to record the pH of the solution in the conical flask throughout the course of the titration after addition of small amounts of the other solution from the burette. It's the bottom end of the kit that literally just gets dipped and held in the solution whilst the reading is being taken. The titration curves, like the one you can see on screen now, have a vertical section to them, sometimes just described as a steep section. And using a pH meter allows you to identify these. The midsection of this vertical section of the curve is described as the equivalence point. When selecting an indicator for a titration, it's important to make sure that the pH range of the indicator matches this vertical section of the curve. Thanks very much for watching this tutorial. If you did find it helpful, I would appreciate if you could give it a like and consider subscribing to stay updated before you go. How are you feeling about level of response questions? Check out the video on screen now, which will help upskill your approach to these for the exam. And until next time, happy revising.